CBS News congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes is with us from Washington. Nancy, how are social media sites and tech companies reacting to this renewed encryption debate? Well, they're pretty uh, concerned about it. What they're worried about is that uh, essentially they're going to be required by legislation uh, to be sort of handing over the keys to uh, their encryption. And that's something they say uh, they don't want to do. Uh, and in some cases, they can't do because uh, they aren't able themselves uh, to unencrypt some of this data in, in certain cases. And they say uh, that's for their customers' protection. Uh, they say if anybody was able to crack this code, uh, then not only would it help law enforcement, but it would help the hackers. Uh, it would help the terrorists in some cases. Uh, and even the FBI director, James Comey, uh, acknowledged that this is a very thorny issue. He said, look, I've got information online that I'm glad is encrypted. You know, my background checks to come to uh, the FBI to work in the federal government. I don't want people having that information under any circumstances. So uh, we're really in this new territory uh, that is very, very difficult uh, to um, for, for, for lawmakers and law enforcement uh, to figure out how do you make sure that people's private information is safe, but also how do you get to uh, terrorist communications, especially when you're trying to foil a plot in real time. Yeah. And this really isn't a brand new conversation. It pops up every once in a while. I'm wondering if the recent terror attacks, like the one in, in San Bernardino and Paris, but also, you know, Garland, Texas, where mm -hmm. the individuals there emailed back and forth with people right. who were, you know, suspect. Uh, I'm wondering if, if that has fueled a sense of urgency at all in Washington among lawmakers to come up with a timeline to, to pass some sort of legislation. It has, because uh, what we've seen over the past year is that um, all these encrypted apps, the dark web, um, they were one option for terrorists in the past. Now, uh, according to law enforcement officials, this is the primary way that they all communicate. So suddenly, uh, all of that communication has basically become invisible to law enforcement authorities. That's why uh, the FBI director uh, very chillingly testified yesterday that, uh, that, that law enforcement simply can't keep pace with uh, the terrorists in terms of tracking what they're saying. So there is this new sense of urgency. Uh, the problem is that we now get back into a debate uh, that Congress had uh, only a few months ago about the conflict between security and privacy. You remember after Edward Snowden uh, revealed some of the NSA's tools, uh, we had this very, very um, a heated debate in Congress and around the country about the proper balance between uh, b between personal rights uh, and security. And in the end, uh, Congress voted to scale back the NSA's uh, database uh, where they basically track every phone call uh, that's made so that if they need to try and figure out uh, who suspected terrorists uh, are communicating with, they can do that. Uh, Congress decided that that was uh, too invasive. And so now we're right back in that same conversation, except in this case, we're talking about uh, not just encrypted data, but also uh, about um, things that uh, would be terrorists post on social media, uh, because that's another piece of legislation that was introduced just this week uh, that says to uh, sites like Facebook and Twitter, hey, if you spot uh, somebody communicating something that you think is suspicious, you would need to let us know. Uh, and and the, um, you know, the tech companies say, that's just impossible. We have... Uh, thousands of communications on our sites every single day. You can't turn us into the police where we're responsible for rooting out what's suspicious and what isn't. It's a debate that will no doubt continue. Nancy Cordes for us in Washington. Nancy, thank you. Thanks for having me.